Congratulations to today's winners of the Shannon Biodiversity Index Problem of the Day. As we've been learning, biodiversity is a complex idea and sometimes it's not so obvious as to how we can quantify how diverse a location or a tested area or a community is compared to another. One metric that has been devised in the last few decades to help assess the relative biodiversity between sites of similar habitat is the Shannon Biodiversity Index. And this has two basic uh, ways of measuring biodiversity. There's a couple of others that sort of integrate into it. But we're going to focus on the idea of species richness, which is denoted with the capital letter H. And then H not, which is for, I'm sorry, not H, you know, H apostrophe, rather than not, um, uh, species evenness. So let's say we have two plots, two meadows, somewhere in the Nashville Basin, and we're looking for good locations for potential protecting and promoting of cedar glade habitat, which is a an ecological community in our state that is disappearing very fast as the Nashville metropolitan area expands. So in Meadow 1, we have seven flowers that are highly associated with these habitats. Pink verbena, fade flower, cardinal flower, Tennessee cone, cone flower, St. John's wort, black-eyed Susan, and prairie clover. And we've got a population count for each denoted as N. And then in Meadow 2, we've done the same assessment, counting up how many of these species is in a particular randomly selected plot area that, you know, may be a few meters square or more or less. And what we're going to do is get a composite value. We can see pure data numbers. But what if we wanted to, to assign them a kind of a value that takes into account both how many species are there and how many of each species are, are there, as well as how healthy is the, rep, is the representation in terms of how many of one population are out there compared to another, and we'll call that evenness. So first we'll do species richness, which goes through the following steps. We sum up all the individuals in all the populations across the species here in each one. And sigma, as we are learning, is a symbol meaning sum in mathematics. Then we get the proportional amounts, and we know how to do that. Take their individual, divide it by the total, and we get our proportions. And of course, if we add, or if we multiply each of these times 100, they would be percents. So since we're not transforming into percents, they should add up to roughly one, depending on how you're rounding. And so not, not surprisingly, we're going to have the largest numbers assigned to the populations with the biggest numbers. Then it time now for the more complex transformation. We take the logarithm of each one of these proportions. We're going to get a negative value, and that's okay. We're going to get rid of it by taking an absolute when we're done. And then we multiply the proportion times its log and then sum that column up. And as you can see, I've put the absolute value symbols there, so we have our H, and the species richness of meadow one is 1.39. Doing the same over here, not surprisingly, we find that meadow two is considerably more diverse, okay, with a uh, 1.9 species richness score. Now onward to evenness. This is where we take our rich, richness and divided by the logarithm of the number of populations studied. The number of populations is S. In our case, we have seven species, so we have seven populations. So our species richness score divided by the natural log of seven, and not surprisingly, we see a much higher evenness score in meadow two than meadow one. Notice that all of the species here are well represented, whereas we have quite an imbalance here between Black-Eyed Susan and the other species, and then we have a, a couple, fang flower, Tennessee coneflower, they're barely represented at all. So, small wonder we're going to have a lower species evenness score. So, in closing, 
a Shannon Burke Biodiversity Index is a good introduction to how scientists and uh, including social scientists can op will often try to take complex data sets and assign them a composite value that lends weight to a certain trend or another. The trend here is closely that is is clearly that meadow two not only is more diverse in the sense that we just have plenty of each species represented, but also that there, there's a similar representation between them. So by taking these logarithmic transformations, we can assign a, a basic value that is standardized and can be replicated as we compare studies between different research areas. If you want to see how this is done on Excel, you'll see in the vid below the video in my description, I've got a Dropbox link to an Excel file version of this very stuff here. And so you can see how it's done on Excel. Let's keep going and let's learn, keep moving along and learning how to make a, a much richer application of mathematics to what we're studying in environmental science than just simply counting heads.